God bless you, my brother and sister. I am Overseer Elsie Hunt, the pastor and founder of King and Kings Baptist Ministries here in the Gulf Coast Center of City. And it gives me a great opportunity and pleasure to invite you to one of our worship services this morning that you might experience God like you've never experienced it before. And I am Elder Ellen Carter, the First Lady of King and Kings Baptist Ministries. Here you will find out that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we believe in worshiping God in spirit and in truth. I pray that as you do this video, that you will be able to experience God as if you've never experienced it before. So come on, go with me into one of our worship services and see what God has in store for you. Let us go now.
without prayer. Amen? Amen.
righteous name. For he and he alone is worthy of all the glory and all the praise. We're going to ask, please stand and receive over to your LC Carter. Amen. This morning, praise the Lord. I'm so glad to see you. And, uh, you may be seated in the awesome presence of God. We are so glad to see you this morning. We just thank God for your presence. So good to see you all on with us for the area you are in Calvary. Amen. Yeah. 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 Bishop, this is the guy that I made that original bishop is the pastor you shared with us this morning. So glad to have you with us. But it's so good to see you this morning. We thank God for you coming out. I know some of you lost an hour today. Amen. You're still looking for it. Amen. Amen. You guys are going to have to wait. Amen. You're going to have to wait a while before we get that hour back. But, but we thank God that you're able to get up and find your way here today. Uh, just want to welcome any visitors that we do have today to King of Kings. Let you know that we're blessed by your presence. We're glad that you took time out to be with us today and to be a part of this worship experience. We pray that while you're here, that you will allow the Spirit of God to move and resonate in your heart, spirit, mind, body, and soul. Amen. I want you to forget about your cares of the world and about the cares of the week. Amen. Let the Spirit of God come in. Because before, well, whether you believe it or not, God already knew your situation before you got here. He knew exactly what he was going to do and how he was going to do it. He was just waiting for you to ask. So all you got to do is ask the Lord. The Bible says that what you ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. That it shall be done. So you need to ask him in the name of the Son. Amen. The great. Amen. Lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. And he will bless your life and continue to allow you to live according to his word. And after you've done that, all you need to do is continue to live according to the word of God. And then God will continue to bless your life. You're going in and you're coming out again. Because it is predicated upon your way of life. Christianity is a lifestyle. It's something that we do. It resonates within us because we are truly the soul of the earth. So welcome to King of Kings. So glad to have you this morning. I'm excited as well because we do have our guest in the house today. Hey man, General Holmes here. Everyone go out.
and we're still dwelling in his spirit of worship. We're just going to call the Holy Spirit to speak comfort to our souls. For the Holy Spirit to let his voice unfold. Because when he's the Lord of a promise, the power of the highest, spirit of glory, voice of the Lord, and we just ask him to
here. But there is a place reserved for them for. But push on your neighbor and tell them I'm alive. Stand behind 
a sacred desk and to peel a sacred page. And I thank God for you. Look over into Washington, D.C. Saul struggling preacher. Say, let him come. Share with you. I am not excited. Elder, good to see you, sir. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. To Cameron, who's been really working very hard. Yeah, that you're standing and I'm on assignment, I, I, I no longer preach sermons. I'm, I'm moved, and not because I'm so deep, but I'm moved because God, I think, wants to give people a message of the word. And anybody in here came for a word? Well, if that be the case, anybody came with your word? Kind of, will you rise to your feet, every one of you? If you're walking here today and you're capable of standing, will you stand in honor and honor of the reading, the clarity of the word of God? And whatever form you brought it in, whether it's printed, whether it's uh, some tablet, whether it's Kindle, whether it's iPhone, or if you just got the word in your heart, I would that you would secure your word and lift it in any way or if it's in your heart, you put your hand on your heart and make this word declaration with me, please. This is my Bible. Is my Bible. I, am I am who it says I am. I, I can do I what it says I can. This Bible declares in Proverbs 18.21.
bless overseer L.C. Carter. Thank you. Bless the ministry, bless the work, bless his pastor. Now, Father, I ask that you would hide me behind the cross, that they may not see me, but they may see you. I strip myself of myself. I distance myself from the arrogance of thinking that I know all truth. God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you would think through my thinking. Speak through my speaking. That ears that are sensitive to hear hear what the Spirit says to the church. And God, if there be anyone among us who knows not Jesus Christ, the Savior, Lord of their life, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that they might receive him today. Be a young church person that they might find refuge here at King of Kings. There's someone who strayed away from the fellowship that they might come back to the fold and find safety. And then God, there's someone here who needs the power of the Holy Ghost. And the evidence of such, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you feel in this place. This is our prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every believer said amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Tell somebody, I give myself away. I give myself away. Anybody give yourself away to the Lord? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Have you ever had the occasion to receive or even send a postcard? It's interesting when I've received it. Subliminal messages are sent when people think enough of you to send a postcard from where they are. Oftentimes they're on one side of the card a scenic something or something of noted worth in the particular place where they are. So that they're in the Caribbean it happens to be some sand and ocean. Perhaps even with a pick of them, getting sun's rays set on their body. Sometimes it's a fate of something where they are and what they've done and what they've, that area is noted for. As a constant reminder, wish you were here. I've gotten those kind of cards and often been uh, upset because most of the people who have sent them to me didn't tell me they were going anywhere. <laughs> the second bit more important that they could have invited me to go along. Yeah. Isn't it just like the girls, excuse me, I'm sorry. Isn't it just like us to go somewhere and then send out notice, wish you were here? The other side of that card is two areas that are provided. They're very, they're very small. They're not very one is for the address to give it to the center. And then there's a small section that's left so that you might just say a few things uh, in hopes. And most times it seems like this is what we've been doing. See you when I get back. When you take a look at the book of Jude, that literally is exactly what you're getting. You're getting Jude, the half-brother of Jesus and James. And uh, he, he comes and he writes on a postcard. But you can't sleep on Jude. Because he lit some major discussions within 20 some odd verses. 
I mean, he starts talking about stuff and moving on to different things. Matter of fact, somewhat scatologically, he just, he, he mentions stuff. Have you ever been on the phone with somebody or even in text? And they just go on from one subject to the next subject to the next subject to the next subject. I'm you talking about hair and they're talking about food in the world. And certainly that is not emerging in combination because nobody wants hair in their food. He merges through this kind of discussion about heaven matters. Matter of fact, he starts talking about the archangels and then he starts talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Moves from one uh, discussion to another discussion, but each of them are major. And I don't care how, how much we shout, I don't care how much we enjoy God, and we ought to, but you better keep your head focused. Stuff that's happening in the atmosphere around us. Oh, it's not just in Washington, D.C. It's happening right here in Pittsburgh. I, I'm sure that there are some people who are coming loose, unglued. Amen, 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 amen. Matter of fact, you've got to be careful with yourself.
for the nation. There are some benefits yes, yes. for the benediction. Uh -huh. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm sorry. Uh, there is a preaching rule that I didn't have. I, I'm sorry. I know it's not fair to start a game and then announce the rules in mid-spring. I'm sorry. I meant to tell you when I started off that I have a strange assessment on quietness in my psyche. The quieter a people are, my mind interprets that to they like long sermons. I Can I make my notes? 
this is Jesus in the illustration. I'm, I'm falling through vanity. I represent a failure voice, a believer. And it's the job of Jesus to take me to the Father. But when he presents me,
say, he that have ears, let him hear. Yeah. If you've been going through, if you are trying to figure out why things are not working out in your life, I believe that you heard why today. When you come to the Lord and you accept him as your personal Savior, or even if you have not come yet, because some people make a big mistake. They don't come because they say, I'm not ready. I, I got to get some stuff in order. If God wanted you to get it in order, he wouldn't be asking you to come. That's right. That's right. That's right. You, if you're sick, you don't go to the doctor after you get well. You go to the doctor while you're sick. And see, God is pushing you, trying to say, look, you see, this is not getting better. Why don't you come in and let me help you? And those of you that are already in and you find out that things are not getting better, you need to ask yourself, am I truly taking the medication as prescribed? See, a lot of you are in church, but you don't want to do church. And that's why you're still struggling, even though you've came because you don't want to live that life that the Bible says you have to live in the rest of God. It said, present your body as a living sacrifice that is holy acceptable for the Lord. Whatever you're doing that would not please God, you need to stop doing it. And no one has to tell you what that is. You already know what it is. It's not rocket science. It's we wrong. We don't. If you are an adult, you know what wrong is. So if you came to Christ already and you're still going through, you need to ask yourself, Lord, help me get right with you. Yeah. If you have not come to Christ yet, Christ is allowing things to happen in your life, trying to push you toward accepting him. He's able. He can turn your life around. And I, those of you that have not come yet, I want you to understand something. I'm so glad you preached that message because I want you to say, just because you look at some of us in the church and we look like we're okay and we're doing just fine, we came from somewhere too. We came from somewhere too. And as he says, some of us will go through some things even while we're here. So don't be ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed about. When you start reading the Bible, you will find that even those that were already in God's good graces have fallen. You have two prime examples. You have David and you have Solomon. David, known as a man after God's own heart, after defeating giants in other countries, saw a woman one day and got in trouble. He was the same, but he still fell. Solomon, the wisest man of his time, wisdom are beyond any man who could ever imagine. Saw some other women and he fell. So it shows you that even though you are saved, you can't fall. You don't have to stay there. And that you're going to fall. If you haven't fallen yet, you win. We're not saying it's going to be major, but something's going to happen. Something's going to happen because you're human. This is your opportunity. Let's everyone to stand today for just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. And this appeal is for anyone that is outside of the ark of Satan. You do not belong to the house of God. This is your time. Today you heard the voice of God. I don't have to tell you. I don't have to prod you. You heard the voice of God. Now is your time to give your life to Christ. I don't want to leave this place not knowing whether or not I'm going to be saved. Because life is short. Life is short. Will you please come? I want you to be a member of this house. Yourself in dignity, and you will attract that type of.
something wrong with me. They said, what's going on with you? I would take them to dinner, take them home. I'd take them to the show. I would take them home.